Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Hey, Tony, there's something that every solo entrepreneur needs to hear. If you're running your own show, you know how important branding and client management are. And speaking of making things easier for solopreneurs, let's talk about Schedulicity. It's designed to personalize your client interactions from start to finish. Schedulicity has some cool new features coming. You'll soon be able to customize your booking page, add your own logos, choose your colors, and really make it sing to your brand's personality. It's like giving your business a digital front door that looks and feels like you. Schedulicity isn't just about looking good. Schedulicity is designed to make everything smoother from booking to billing. You know, it's not just about the looks, it's about efficiency too. They've integrated something pretty slick, intake forms. Now clients can fill out all the details before they even step foot into the door. What's cool is these forms attach to the client's profile and update automatically for future appointments. Talk about saving time and starting on schedule. It's your schedule and your success all rolled into one. With all these tools from Schedulicity, you're not just running your business, you're growing it. And for all the solopreneurs and sweet owners out there, this is exactly the kind of support we need to stand out in a crowded market. My name's Gordon Carter. Sit with my best friend, Tony. What's up, buddy? What's going on, man? Man, we are once again at Premier Orlando. Big thanks and shout out to to our our connect here, Miss Rachel. Miss Miss Rachel Brill. She's a she's uh one once again she's accommodated us like perfect. Yeah, she's the best, and uh, and and she's you know like a lot of times when when you go to these events and you can't reach the people who who you know what I mean. Oh, that good point. Helped you get here. She, she's right there. I mean, yeah. she is available. She helps out. She makes you feel pretty much at home. Well, maybe she just makes us feel at home and everyone else she's a dick to. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> am too, you, you know. <laughs> um, we also uh, want to uh, give a shout out and a big thank you to Schedulicity. Schedulicity, once again, is sponsoring our live weekends. Yeah, they, uh, they sponsored us at ABS. And they're sponsoring us again here at Premier Orlando. Um, we are a multi-year user of Schedulicity. And I can tell you that if you're independent, if you're in the suite, this app was is meant for you. But more importantly, meant for you is meant for your clients. Um, yeah. It's just it's so easy. We can lead a horse to water, but we can't make them drink. But, hey, you, you see in us, we're drinking the, the Kool-Aid. And, <laughs> yeah, for real. And the, the Schedulicity Kool-Aid. And uh, we're huge fans. And we, th- we think not only... Uh, are, are they just a, 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 an amazing product? You know what I mean? They're equally as amazing people. That, you know what? If you could judge a, if you could judge a company or a business by their people, like they're, they're class acts. Thousand percent. You know? Yeah. And, and well, I'm not going to, well, yes. <laughs> they're yeah. class so listen, we're, we're, we're big fans of it. Um, we know that everybody has the opportunity to spend money where they want to spend money. Um, please be aware that Schedulicity is all about the independent hairdresser and they, their entire funnel is how to make your life easier. So if, if you're with the scheduling app now and you, 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 uh, you're unhappy with something, you know, definitely give Schedulicity a try. They're amazing. And also they just teamed up with PBA and, um, uh, PBA, for what is it called like for one yeah so uh with pba for one and actually if you sign up with pba for one I th- they give you like a free year of schedulicity right a, f- a free whole year free whole year i mean yeah. like you talk about like a good day t- this is no like you get a you know, try it for uh, seven days and you know and, and if you're not familiar with pba i mean what a, an organization to if if you have any questions about the industry you're going to find the answer through pba yeah, I mean they have sure. they have it all, and, and they're willing to help. And if they don't have the answer, they'll find it for you. Mm-hmm. That's how great they are. This is a great resource, you know. Yeah, and then throw uh, schedule listing on top of that for years. What? She, that's awesome. Mm. Hey, so um, really cool. So we're doing a live event. We love doing live events. I say this on every podcast live event that we do, but you know our goal every time we do this is to dig deeper with our old friends and to make new friends. And today we're making a new friend, which I'm really excited about because we met a couple months ago. Um, our friend. Jacob Kahn and Ben White actually introduced us to our guest today, um, and we were kind of, we'll get into it, but we were, we, were, we were scheduling a podcast, and then the world caved in, and then it was all crazy, and my ego got in the way, and all this kind of stuff, so I apologize for my ego getting in the way, but, uh, but uh, we'll get into it. So today, our, our guest is Krista Bartik. 
Did I get it right? Yeah, you got it. Boom, nailed perfect. it. Boom. Nailed it. Um, and listen, if you don't know anything about Krista Bartik, what you need to know is her mom makes the greatest coffee, crumb cake, breakfast thing ever. So go look up her mom. And like, and that's it. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you later. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I was, I was going to say the same thing. Her, you know, her mom pushed Krista <laughs> all the way to the top of you our new what? friends. You know what? Yeah. Actually, you know what? Chris, can I get your mom's number? <laughs> <laughs> I will let her know. Uh, my friends all love my mom. I swear, some people are only friends with me because of my mom. She's amazing. Not actually, I but see, I she's get pretty it. great. I, I, I get it. it. Yeah. Can you cook like that? Um, no. No, not at all. <laughs> I can I can bake. I, I got that recipe, but she was an angel, and she cooked that for me because I was busy getting Aww. ready, packing. I was working behind the chair before I left to come here, so she made that for me so I could bring it here for you guys. So. Yeah, That's she amazing. was. She's an angel. That's sweet. Oh. Yeah, I'm glad you guys liked it too. It was so oh, good. Like, it's yeah. a little oh. nerve wracking. After we get off air, we I mean, should definitely it, it, FaceTime. It's the her. perfect yeah. crumbly. Cr I mean, it crumbles perfectly. You <laughs> know, it's just like it's moist still. It's uh, all, all the goods. Mm, I got, like, you can see all the white powder. <laughs> <out of> it. <laughs> she and definitely warned. Us. <laughs> she definitely warned us about that. Definitely but. gave a warning. Chris, so you said that you were working. Like, where are you from? Yeah, so I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. Like East you grew Coast. up in Raleigh or like you just... No, so I'm actually from New York originally. A lot of people don't know this about me. Grew up on Long Island, moved to the south. So I have a northern root with a little bit of a southern charm. Basically means I could say something super blunt, get away with it with a smile. That's what I like to say. <laughs> oh, so that's great. I love it. Yeah, I, I love the south. Everyone's oh. so nice and mm -hmm. so chill, very laid back. Up north, it's like go, go, go. And I still walk a little too fast in the salon, but... You know, it's it's fine. So, yeah, I grew up in Raleigh, North Carolina. People say I'm a fake New Yorker because <laughs> I was there for 10 years right. and then 15 years down south. So do with that what you want. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I love the south, Raleigh, North Carolina. I work behind the chair at a commission salon, and I absolutely love it. How long have you been doing hair? Five years. Oh, wow. Yeah, five years. Wow. Yeah, this industry found me. I didn't mean to be a hairstylist. I actually wanted to be a makeup artist. I went to hair school because I wanted a cosmetology license. I wanted to travel. I wanted to do makeup for celebrities or bridal. I mean, I didn't even know where that was going to take me. I just wanted to put foundation on people and, you know. You always art. wanted to do this? Is this like a, a game plan from as a little girl or? No, not at all. I When I was younger, like very little, I wanted to be an astronaut or a singer. And I can't sing. Oh, you made it. I Yeah, I can't sing. But and, you, and you're scared of heights. It. Yeah. yeah <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Actually not scared of heights, which that one. So I could still be an astronaut. You never know. I mean, you're pretty young. But, you, could, you could probably, you could, I could you could do probably anything. Do like, I, have you jumped out of planes and stuff? No, I've never done that. I would love to go skydiving. I think that'd be so sick. Have you guys done that? So here's the story. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, I want to go skydiving. Like, this is like something to me. And then yeah. actually Tony, me, Tony and Tony's little brother. Do you remember this? Mark. His little brother Marky. We went on like one of those like, you know, like those pendulum swings where they like they, yes. they, dude, straight up panic attack. If we if it wasn't for his little brother, like it, which was twenty five years ago, we'd still be up there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was so terrified up there, and I'm like, I can't do this. Were you hanging by your feet? No, no, no. They they kind of put a harness around you, and then they put you in like oh. a group of three. So the three of us were like hiked up to the top. You know, it's like one of those V shaped kind of oh, th or the yeah. the art shaped thing where they pull you out. Yeah, if it, and thank God Marky was like 15 at the time right. or something because he had the <laughs> he had the goes to uh to 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 pull the to, to pull the rip cord. Oh Man, I was like I was in panic situation up oh, there. I yeah, bet. so so I, yeah, at that point I was like, nah, I don't need this guy now. <laughs> <Yeah>, I <Right. laughs> don't need this guy. We're good. <laughs> but yeah, so doing makeup. I mean, that wasn't something I always wanted to do. I actually was really scared to go in the industry because because I was under the impression that beauty professionals didn't make enough to have a living. And that's what I thought. So I was so scared. I actually almost went into the dental field, worked as a dental, I mean, not a dental assistant, like a front desk girl and set up everything in a dental office mm -hmm. and loved it. But, you know, I was like, this is not my calling. I'm like, this is not where I want to be. And my now best friend, but back in high school, we were complete strangers. She's like, hey, I'm going to Aveda Institute. I think this is something you would love because during prom in high school, I would skip out on prom and do hair and makeup. And I just, I loved to play. I used to pluck people's eyebrows. They would actually come to my house and pay me like $5 to pluck their eyebrows. And I loved it. It was, that paid for my chicken minis the next day. So <laughs> it was great. So yeah, I went to cosmetology school and I was like, I don't want to be a hairdresser. I remember on the day one, we were doing the sectioning where you have to do a straight line from like in the part. center all the way to the back. And I was like, I'm done. 
I'm like, I don't want to do this. This is not me. I'm here to be a makeup artist, not a hairdresser. And then when we started actually coloring hair, that's when I fell in love with it. So people always ask, like, how did you find this industry? The industry found me. I absolutely loved it. It was tedious. It was hard. It was challenging. And you're constantly growing. And I'm a type of person where if I'm not growing, I feel so stuck. I like I can't do that. I can't be that person. So I'm always looking for the next thing. And this industry is the perfect place to be. And your parents were okay from the get go. Oh, yeah. So supportive. My mom is the most supportive person in my entire life. Like that woman. She is my best friend. She's been there for me from the start. And she's been the one person that I tell my big dreams to. And she's the one person who doesn't look at me like they're not possible. And that means so much. Yeah. Even the astronaut. Even the astronaut. astronaut. If I told her that, she'd be like, honey, you can do anything you want. You're going to go home, there's going to be a rocket in your backyard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But when I get reincarnated, I want your mom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) No, she really is amazing. She's a light. That's so cool. Where do you think your mom kind of like learned that? So my mom's very spiritual. She is um, like the most positive person I've ever met in my entire life. She went through a lot when she was younger, and I think that really shaped her and the person she is today. And that's kind of carried into me. So I think experiences kind of shaped her to be that way. And then spirituality has been a big part of her life as well. I've actually never said this live, but I feel like now is a perfect time to do it. My mom's actually a medium. So she talks to dead people. You know, that's like a big, big part of my life. And it's how I'm so spiritual in terms of how I work in energy and classes and how I I'm able to connect with students in that way, just reading the room and, you know, kind of feeling the energy as we're there. So you're an educator as well? Yes. Yeah. Educator as well. I've been educating for three years. Mm -hmm. I started with Masters of Balayage for two years. And then this is my first year. Shout out to Ryan. Shout out Ryan. (laughs) And MJ. You know MJ, MJ, right? Yes. Oh, I love MJ. I saw her yesterday. First off, if you don't love MJ, I don't love you. Oh my (laughs) God. That girl, what is there not to love? Her accent too. She could talk. I'm like, you need a podcast. She could talk for hours. She does it so well. Yeah. Mm. MJ's amazing. So I was with Masters for two years and Ryan took a chance on me. I was young. I was 21 years old and I was like, hey, I want to be an educator. I was in the industry for like two years you know what what was I gonna do I mm-hmm. thought I couldn't be an educator because I was so young <laughs> that scared me so much but Ryan took a chance on me and ever I mean I will forever be thankful for that opportunity because it's how I got to where I am today that's wow. yeah. that's very cool because um in that sense like you and MJ parallel right because when, when yeah. she started working for a mob she was she was only a couple years in as well you know yeah so I mean like shout out to Ryan I mean like yeah. To take a young, to take young artists and let them dream. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, Ryan always said he wanted to give people the opportunities that he was never given. And that stuck with me. Wait and a sec. Hold on. It. Hold on. Because when we did the podcast with Ryan, I think he readily admit that, uh, that, that he was in his way all the time. He, he was in his own way all the time. So yeah. whether he, whether someone gave him the opportunity or didn't give him the opportunity... I think this is how I remember it. Ryan, if th- this is not your story at all, I apologize. But <laughs> I thought like he was like, because the, b- the podcast that we did, the way that I remember it was that uh, all the adversity that he had put in his own way. And like he really knew like when he stepped out of his way, that's when the magic stopped, started. Oh. That's when the magic started for him. Interesting. So, anyways. Wow. That, that's it. I, I don't know if I just busted Ryan's balls or not, but oh. you know, <laughs> that's it. I guess we'll find so, out. So you were with, so with Mob for a couple years. Yeah, with Mob for two years, educated with them, worked on photo shoots with them, created the looks we were traveling and teaching. I mean, I was all hands in. It was the best experience of my life. I absolutely loved it. And leaving Mob and going independent was honestly the hardest decision I've ever made in my entire life. This company basically shaped who... I am today because mm-hmm. I was in a commission salon. I was working with, I'm still in a commission salon, same salon that I was at the time. And I was working with other stylists. They were very successful. They are very successful stylists behind the chair, but that's kind of where their success lives. And I wanted my success to live there as well as other places as well. Mm-hmm. So Masters of Alliage really gave me a visual of like, okay, what what is this industry made of? What are the opportunities out there? And I was surrounded around like-minded people, and that is powerful. You know yeah. the quote where, like, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room? Yep. I live by that. So left that room, went to a new room, and it's 
taken me from there. Well, you're <laughs> definitely the smartest person in this room. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that one. <laughs> what was some of the struggles in your head? Because uh, there's a lot of other young hairdressers that might be kind of facing a situation where they want to do something, but maybe not have the confidence or afraid to leave something that's really been a huge in, a part of who they are. Um, so what was that battle with yourself to make that transition to be an independent? The battle was, I mean, to be an independent, going from master's leave it, to... Yeah, leaving, because that could yeah. be a scary thing. Oh, it was terrifying. So I was working with a big company that was doing marketing. They were booking classes. They were booking flights. So my only worry was showing up to a class and putting on a great show. That was my only worry. So the like struggles and the anxiety that came with going independent was, okay, this is all me. It's all me now. Like if I miss a flight, I have to figure out what to do. There's no calling someone and being like, Hey, what do I do? Like it's, I make the decisions and that's absolutely terrifying. But I've also learned through this industry, if it scares you, that's how you go for it. And I think that's how being so young, how I've been able to grow so quickly, because if it scared me, I went for it. It didn't hold me back. So I say this at classes, the only thing getting in the way of you and your dream is yourself. Mm. So when we get out of our own way, kind of like you were saying, it's really funny, yeah. we were just talking about that. It's crazy how magic happens. So going independent, I've been able to become this person that I've always seen myself being. And it's always been there, but you know, there's a little bit of a wall and you kind of break down those walls as you get older too. Yeah, it feels like I'm talking to a 35 year old. I love that. I get that yeah. all the time. Old soul over <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. You're still Wait till a baby. we get into my music cha right. taste. That's <laughs> Uh, well, we're here. Over uh, here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love some Elton John, some Billy Joel. I mean, oh, I love 80s. like, yeah, yeah. I just, I love it. That's yeah. very cool, man. Rocking and rolling. Got the sunroof open. Right. You know, yeah. we're chilling. <laughs> <laughs> little Jimmy Buffett on there. Oh, know? yeah. Uh, the whole, the whole nine yards. Yeah. Uh, the whole, is that a band? No. No. I just said that. <laughs> that was just a saying. <laughs> a, that was a movie, right? Oh, yeah. I don't know. It, it a, could a, be a band. Of, could be a whole, the whole nine name. yards. It was, a, it was a movie, football. Yeah, that's right. Still don't. No, never present. Mind. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get sidetracked there. That, that's yeah. That's why. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna talk about a little bit about like how you built like a following on Instagram and stuff because um, what do you have like a hundred and some change like, yeah. like followers and stuff? Yeah, hundred eight thousand. Like how did 8, how'd you kind of figure that out and in in all that jazz? Yeah, that's a crazy one. I honestly started on social media because I wanted to build connections with brands and companies because I knew I wanted to educate. And I looked at people that were doing things that I wanted to do and I did what they did. So I had people and I was watching their Instagram. Why does that sound so simple? <laughs> right. <laughs> it, hey, it, it, can, it sounds simple, but definitely yeah. was not simple. But yeah, I mean, I looked at what they were doing and I'm like, okay, they're posting on social media. What kind of content are they posting? I'm gonna post content similar to that. And it's not that I was copying little things they were doing. There were a couple posts out there when you first start kind of copying someone before you develop your own voice. And then through doing it and through repetition, I started to create my own voice and my own reels and you know share education. And I just realized my strengths and my weaknesses and I tried to share those. And honestly, the authenticity behind the page, that's been the hardest part I've been authentic from day one, but I think it's really hard to show true, true colors while also maintaining a professional um, presence to you, especially being so young. I never wanted anyone to view me as somebody who was unprofessional because I was, you know, 22 years old. Sure. I wanted to make sure I had like a great, great presence to my page. And so that was really hard. That was, that was challenging, but I started the page and just started posting education, um, reels started going viral, started being shared on big pages, like behind the chair, Hairbrain, Beauty Launchpad, Redken. Mm -hmm. I mean, all these big, big companies started sharing my work and I just kept going with it. And eventually we got here and I fixated on that number for so long and the number does not matter. Uh -uh. It's funny how you keep growing, you learn that that number is literally just a number. Yeah, but you know, I, yeah. uh, uh, Yes, you're right. Once you hit a certain level of success, um, and, and it has nothing to do with the number, but where you, in your own self, where you go, oh, I've reached a certain num amount of success, like that number doesn't matter. However, yeah. 
the the and and certainly when we started this and we started to grow a little bit of an Instagram following, like it was really nice to he to see that it was validation and that we're doing the right things the right way. Yes. You know, so so the number meant that to me, but it didn't mean like what kind of product we're going to put out there or what kind of thing. We're just, just like, oh, OK, so we're be basically like what every human on Earth wants. We want it to be seen and heard and literally we're heard because of the podcast. But but it was just validation that our, that our message was was getting out there, yeah. um, which, which which felt good. But it wasn't necessarily about all oh, the, the followers. I, it's hard to explain, but yeah. it's more about just the validation that, that we're on the right track. I've never heard anyone say that. And I love that. The validation that you're on the right track. That's so yeah. beautiful. But not the validation that it, that I'm worthy. Yes. It's not that, but it's just like, oh, are we are, are we putting out the right message? Yeah. You know? People like the message you're putting out, too. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's what it's meant to me. Um, but but like again, once we once we reach, I don't even look at those numbers anymore. You know, because yeah. it just doesn't. You reach who you reach. It's kind of it's kind of it's kind of where we're at. But it, but it was very it was very motivating to be honest oh, with yeah. that. So you know, I'm, I don't beat myself up because I was looking at number count at one point. Yeah, that makes oh, sense. Yeah. You know I feel I mean? like how do we not look at number count when you first start? You know, you're like looking at all these people and you're like, oh, they have all this, and it's really hard to not compare. I mean, so speaking of compare, so uh, who's mm-hmm. uh, whose Instagram pages were you stealing? Ooh, okay. Who, whose was I inspired by? I'm gonna change your <laughs> wording. <laughs> I was looking at. Let me think back to the very beginning. I loved Lisa loves balayage. Of course, still love her work. She's incredible. Mm-hmm. Was really looking at her page. Um, Masters of balayage. I was looking at as well. I'm trying to think from the very Olivia mm-hmm. Smiley. Smiley. Smalley. Smalley. Olivia well, Smalley. Actually, yeah. yeah a yeah, lot of her content. Like she was. Well, on she's page. brilliant. She's brilliant. Um, if you read her, her, what's it called? The the oh, words. The, no, no, the words you put under the picture. Uh, the caption. The oh, caption. Oh, caption. So her captions are beautiful. Um, and she'll readily admit it that like, in all her captions, she's talking to the consumer, she's talking to the brand, and she's talking to um the other educators. So, so smart. that's how her captions are, are set up, and that's how she she does them, and that's how she got. That's how she was creating value to all those people. To Checking all those off different boxes. Yeah, yeah, she's brilliant. Yeah, uh, she, uh, will if you if you're not close to her, we'll introduce you to her. She's amazing. Yeah, absolutely, I'd love that. Yeah, she she's br- she's brilliant, and um, she's also very open to you can pick her brain. Yeah, about it too. Okay. So cool. yeah, 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 she, yeah, yeah. So uh, oh yeah, so you're going to the Rocks Bar tonight, so I can introduce you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm going now. <laughs> you're going now, man. Yeah, no, no, no. She she she's brilliant with that, and she's she's very like. Um, authentically strategic about it. Like she doesn't lose herself in the strategy, you know, which I think is also like, is the strategy or the authenticity more important? Like I think sometimes there's confusion there as well. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. But when you were building your Instagram and, and you're, then you see the number, because I mean, obviously it rose really quickly, right? You're like, whoa. Um, and then uh, there was rumors that somehow you lost it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When you woke up or when somebody told you, what was it? that so it's a funny story i was actually on a first date when i found out my instagram was hacked with my now boyfriend so it went well right. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a moment that i never thought would happen the day before i had taught my very first class of my independent tour it was hair photography and social media and it's really ironic because i was talking about the meta verification the blue check mark we were talking all things social media and i said in the class I pay for this because I want security if I were to ever get hacked. Dude, someone in that class definitely hacked you. You would think so. (laughs) I'm like, I'm going to go back to that class list. (laughs) Watch out if you were there March 10th. (laughs) So, yeah, we were talking about that in the class. And then the following day, it was gone. It was just vanished from me. Everything I had worked for for the past five years was just taken from me like that. And I had developed my life into this social media platform. And I mean, you, you're there for hours, hours, hours on a day, you're engaging, you're building those connections, you're posting, you're thinking of content ideas constantly. I mean, being a content creator is a full-time job Mm. and it was just gone like that. So what was that? What was that initial panic? Oh my God. I mean, it was my worst fear coming alive. Like picture something that you never thought could happen but you know it there's a potential and you're absolutely scared of it and then it just happening I mean literally stomach drop like I mean I was probably pale as a ghost like that was absolutely terrifying so I wasn't on my phone for hours say that again tears tears no tears actually I kept my cool 
I did keep my cool. There were tears later. It was like the initial shock was like, I'll get through it, whatever. And then, you know, a couple of days later, there were a lot of tears. And once the tears came, they didn't stop. So mm -hmm. definitely a lot of tears in there. But the initial reaction was because I looked at my phone after not being on it for like three or four hours. And I had hundreds of calls, texts being like, your account's gone, you're hacked, like we're hacked. And so I actually got a text from my friend Summer, mainly Summer. If you guys don't know her, definitely look her up. She's incredible. Mainly She's, Summer's her Instagram? Yeah, mainly Summer is her Instagram. Hopefully and it's still there. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so she called me and she said, we are hacked. So she was hacked at the same time. Oh. So there was a little sense of comfort knowing that we were going through this together. <laughs> right. That's the shittiest comfort ever. It's <laughs> called trauma bonding. <laughs> yeah, it totally is, right? I learned that day yeah. what trauma bonding was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah, I'm like, all right, we're in this together. We're going to grow together. I'm like, we're going to figure this out. Like we got this. And it was, it was the worst day of my life. And the worst two weeks, honestly, that was a very dark, dark time. Whoa. Very dark time. Okay. So, um, anyone listening in? So, uh, Ben White and Jacob Kahn introduced us to Krista, um, at Hairbrain, which by yes. the way was like March 6th, right? Like, so this is like it days was, before. Yep. I think it was March 3rd we were there. Yeah, something yeah. like that. It was, it was definitely yeah. early, early March. And then we, um, you and I had talked. Yeah. We had DM'd each other. Literally. And, and we were, we were, we talked about doing a podcast together and, uh, I went to look back in our DMs and your DMs were not there. So initially I thought like, Oh my God, this chick blocked me. And we, and, and to, and to be honest, to be honest, we were in a bar, right? So yeah. I was like, did I say something wrong? Did I, did I offend her in some way? I mean, I, I don't really know her. And I, but then like, I couldn't think of any, I mean, all I did was congratulate you for your hairbrained right. win. <laughs> so I was like, maybe she didn't want to win the hairbrained award. I don't, I don't know. Um, but then, um, but then my, my second thought was like, maybe I'm getting her name wrong, which on Instagram, certainly when it comes to Instagram, handles happens all the time. How do oh, you yeah. spell it? Where's the underscore? Where's the, you know, all the <laughs> things. So, so I reached out to Ben and I go, Ben, who was that girl you introduced me to at, at Hairbrained? And then he said, he didn't even say who it was before he said, oh my God, she was hacked. She lost everything. You know, and it was right, probably right there around March 6th or, you know, right, right, right in that time. And, uh, and then March 11th. Yeah, yeah March, March 11th, 11th. Exactly. I'll never forget that day. <laughs> I bet you won't. Um, but, but then I had panic for you because in the same, the same boat, like, I don't know what we would do, you know? Yeah. Okay. So that's the setup. Yeah. That's so the you've setup. got, so you've got your Instagram back. You got your yes. hacked, hacked, into, that was hard to say. Hacked Instagram back, hack back. You got yes. your hack back. Yes. So got hack back. You got your hack back. So, um, what was that procedure? How did that happen? Were you, were you held for ransom? Yeah. So that was, that was a crazy 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 time so when i was hacked initially i had opened up my instagram page and it oh yeah said, yeah 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 let's start off with how did you get hacked yeah so when summer had called me and she said hey we're hacked i'm like no like i don't i don't know i was in such denial i opened up my instagram page and it said hey your account has been suspended it said and you have 180 days to appeal this decision or else your account is completely gone and so I was like, oh my God, this is, you know, this is like, what, what do I do? So there's like a little button at the bottom that says appeal decision, you know, click that you put in why you think your account was uh, suspended mistakenly for whatever reasons and put like a photo ID and a picture of yourself in that moment. Like you had to submit like a video of yourself, you know, just showing that, hey, I am who I am. This mm -hmm. is my account. This was a mistake. And it said, hey, we'll get back to you in 24 to 48 hours. And so I'm like, okay. We're going to wait. We're going to wait for Instagram to reach out. I'll hear back from them soon. Following day, I received a message saying my account was disabled permanently and I cannot get it back. So there's no one can see me. No one can find me. My I can't use my account. It's just completely disabled. So for two weeks, my account was at, like it was gone. It was non-existent. If you had DM'd me in the past, it said Instagram user with no profile photo. You could still see the messages but it was completely gone. And I had clients think they blocked, like I blocked them. You thought you I blocked you. you did. I did. <laughs> I'm actually, that's the New Yorker in me. I actually blocked all of them. <laughs> but yeah, that was, oh my gosh. So yeah, it was suspended and then it was um, disabled. And then that was me trying to get in touch with Meta, which is absolutely impossible, by the way. If you ever need to get in touch with Meta, like, that's the hard, like you have to know someone within Meta and no one knew anyone within Meta that I knew. So that was really hard to get in contact with them. 
So I went on Facebook and I was trying to go through my business page and contact AI because, you know, Meta owns Facebook and Instagram for anyone mm -hmm. out there who doesn't know that they are connected. My accounts were not linked. And I want to say, too, when I was hacked, I was not I didn't click any link in my email. I didn't get logged into like two factor identification is on like this was all done within Instagram. This wow. was nothing was anything with passwords, links. And that's the most annoying part about this whole experience because I didn't do anything wrong to where that could have happened. Like it was completely out of my control. It was, and I'm a control freak, so that's a hard thing <laughs> for me to do. So yeah, completely out of my control. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, so contact, contacting Instagram, very challenging. I was sending emails left and right. I actually had a lot of friends help. That was a very important time to show like who's really there for you. Mm. Brands were helping, friends were helping. And I wanna shout out Emily Chen as well because she was an absolute angel within that process and Jacob as well. And Katie, KTB Hair, if you guys mm -hmm. don't follow her, she's incredible too. She, she was like sending videos of how she got her account back because she, she was hacked as well. So Does there was at the same time. At the same time. So there was a group of, I'm going to pull up everyone's name so I don't forget anyone. There was a group of us that were all hacked at the same time. So it was me, Summer mainly, Stevie, Hair by Stevie, mm -hmm. Katie, KTB Hair, Linson, Linson Hair. Johnny Cosmo and Carly, the Blonde Chronicles. Whoa. All of our accounts were hacked within the same time. So this was somebody that was targeting hairstylists and we just so all happened to be in it together. So we actually formed a little group message and you know, every day we were chatting in there and trauma checking bonding. in, trauma bonding <laughs> trauma pretty bonding. much. <laughs> we all Whoa. agreed we're taking a shot together at Behind the Chair Show in August. So Who was the first to get it back? The first to get it back was Linson, but Linson was also the first to get hacked. So he was hacked a week prior to all of our accounts being taken at once. So I can't even imagine what he was going through because he was trying to figure it out firsthand of, you know, who by was himself, doing this right? and by himself. And he was the first to get it back. And then uh, Katie was able to get hers back. And then slowly it all started to come are together. All of those, are all of those accounts meta verified? Not all of them, but majority of them were. But so, so you still can get your, oh, oh geez, I don't even want to, yeah. Yeah. So I, I know you were angry at Meta. You're like, what the hell oh, did I pay for? so pissed. So pissed. Because I was paying $17 a month for that. And like, I'm cheap. I don't even pay for Spotify a month. Like, <laughs> right. like 17 like I was really, that was an investment I was willing to make because I wanted that security if this were to ever happen to me and it happened to me and I did not receive the security. However, I do feel it helped a little bit because with friends messaging Meta and emailing, they were able to say, hey, my friend is meta verified. And I feel like that did create a little bit of a. You know what you need to do? What? You need to do a video about how you got your account back and every step and then put it on YouTube. Because I, I bet you there's a bazillion people that aren't in the hair world yeah. that, that that are kind of doing, do, you know, kind of going through the same thing. And like, even if it's just a little bit of like, you know, a, a little bit of a hug from of a stranger. Yeah. You know, I think that could be really powerful yeah. about how you get your account back. Because that's the first place that. I'd go would be YouTube and be like, how do I get this back? Because yeah. at that point, you can't trust Meta. No, right? you can't. It, it, you know what happened to his daughter? Did it really? She, she got she got kicked off of Facebook. And like, by the way, her Facebook was the most benign thing ever. So it, it wasn't like she was there was anything offensive on there, you know, unless you want to watch her do push-ups. Unless you find her doing push-ups, like, <laughs> right. offensive. Honestly, there was nothing on her account. Has she gotten it back? Still nah. no. Yeah, it's permanent. It's gone. She she's not even worried about it anymore. So she yeah. wow. she's not even she didn't open up a new one or anything. She just canceled Facebook altogether. Wow. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I mean, I don't blame her for that. After yeah. that, I would be like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's wild, yeah. man. So yeah. so all that, all your friends went through, and then one day it just popped up. Did you get an email saying, "Hey, welcome back"? Yeah, I actually got a text from someone. She was like, hey, I was literally working out at the gym trying to, You're like, doing your push-up. You know, You're doing I your push-up video. I was doing my push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> your push-up video. Right, it was yeah. my turn to do the push-ups. <laughs> maybe that's it. Maybe, that's <laughs> maybe that was maybe it. Maybe that is why you get hacked. No push-up videos. Don't do push-up videos. Don't do push-up videos. Watch out. <laughs> I was at the gym, and I got a text, and she was like, oh, my God, you're back. And I'm like, Guess wait, what, back. what are you talking about? And went to Instagram. I was back. And I was like, holy crap. God, now now I, there I were tears. Email. There were happy tears. They yeah, were yeah. very happy tears. Yep. Did yep. everybody get theirs back then? Not at the same time. We all slowly got it back. So that's where it got really hopeful because Linson got his back first and then Katie got hers back. And then after that, we slowly, 
like day after. Hey, were you day. in? The, were you in the group text with all those people? Like, fuck you, bitches! I've got a back. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're like bye, bye. peace, <laughs> peace and hair grease. <laughs> Remove yourself from the group chat. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, all right, bye guys. <laughs> It's been a fun yeah. ride. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> no, that's that's the amazing part. Hate to be you. <laughs> that's the great part about all the people I was hacked with, though, because when they got their accounts back, they were as determined to get everybody else's account back as we were to get ours back. That's so that was awesome. the best part. So nobody was like, peace out, leave in the right. group chat. No. Like, good luck with that one. Like, Why did Linson just leave the chat? <laughs> <laughs> just pieces. Just, just the piece just a piece emoji. <laughs> and then he's gone. Or a, or a single piece. <laughs> 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 oh my yeah. god. So oh, yeah. Would that be insult to injury? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Salt in the wound. <laughs> oh my so yeah, god. everyone helped afterwards. So since they were meta verified, they were reaching out. They were like, Hey, I got friends. Do you still have that email thread? Um of the, the text thread? The text thread of the group? Oh yeah. I was going through it on the plane yesterday. That's where I got all this like note from it. I was like reliving the trauma and I was like, Oh my god. I remember that time. So yeah, we were all in there just chatting, like, how's everyone doing? How's everyone holding up? All right, so, so if you got blocked or you know someone who got blocked, blow up uh, Chris's uh, DMs and ask her for that list so you can see how <laughs> see how they did it. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. We're, we're all willing to help. Right. That's, yeah. that's one, one, it's incredible that you got it back, but, yeah. like, just, it's annoying that you can't get to anyone. Yeah, and that's the thing. Everyone's like, how did you get it back? And there's no one answer. I would wake up in the morning and click around on Facebook looking for some sort of chat button. Mm -hmm. uh, going to bed at night, I would search the internet. I would email every single email I came across. I didn't even know if it was contacted in Meta, but I was sending them an email. And then email after email. <laughs> I think email I got one of those. Email. Yeah, you probably, <laughs> yeah. Got, you probably got an email from me. Exactly. Hey, this is Krista. Right. We, we, we have a friend who at the time was probably like a quarter million followers. Oh and that I'm not going to mention the name, but that person got hacked. And I'm pretty sure that person got ransomed. And I'm pretty sure they paid it. Really? You know, which, which, by the way, not that you would ever like want to pay a rent, but what's your, what's your, you know, like, like yeah. no, no matter what, well, yeah. I'm going to give someone an idea, but really, I mean, once you get to a certain level, like no matter what that number is, it's worth it. It's, yeah. You know, because your whole business is around, you know, that, or your whole um, potential for exposure is around that number. Like, yeah. like, you know, like which brand, brands, the first thing you're going to do is go to your Instagram and go like, you know what? What kind of following or what, what? What kind of content are they putting out? A and then B. You know what's their follow? You know, so what's great, their, Corey. What's their reach? You're telling everybody that if you get ransomed, you're going to pay for it because it's worth it. <laughs> We're definitely getting hacked. <laughs> We're definitely watch out. Hey, can I get in that thread? <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Krista, send, send me a text. I got you. <laughs> Can you put me in the thread? Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. I mean, it seems like an Instagram account. So many people are like, oh, it's Instagram, whatever. But, no, this no, is. so much more than that. This is, like, people's income. This is this is how I market myself. This is how I build my relationship with my clients, maintaining my relationship with my clients. So this affected not only my mental health, but it also started to affect be. financially as well. Of course like, it would. I had cancellations at the salon, and usually I would post on Instagram, and guess what? Those spots didn't get filled. I had classes to market for. Guess what? I had to cancel those Very classes because I had two weeks that I couldn't market those classes for. So it, it set me behind. It's yeah. definitely like it really affected a lot of things. So Instagram's it, more than just a platform. It, and what's 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 really annoying about it is that Instagram wanted this. Mm -hmm. You know, they wanted the engagement. They wanted people to run their business through it. But then now that there's no help for that, when like you said, you didn't do anything. What'd you do? You, you woke up one morning and, and opened up your app and it wasn't, or you opened up your account. And it wasn't there. It's really annoying that, 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 that the approach is so aloof. Yeah. But they should have a full team. there, like trying to get accounts back, but it seems like they don't care. They you don't know? care. Wh no. which, which really, which, which is really, which is really, really sad. You know, that's why TikTok's taking over the world. Yeah. That's why TikTok's taking over. So that How's was your TikTok account. TikTok, it's not as big as Instagram, but I'm focusing on that now. That was mm -hmm. one of the things I learned from this experience was, hey, start to focus on other yeah. platforms. You cannot put all your eggs in one basket. That Do you find that mistake. TikTok, like I find like Instagram is very like hairdresser to hairdresser. And like I know, I, I had this conversation with Ruby Devine a couple of weeks ago, not the name drop, but, um, but we were having the conversation and TikTok is more, less hairdressers to reach, 
but a, 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 a wider international audience. So yes. if you do stuff that's like that's like consumer happy or consumer friendly, like like you'll get a lot of attention for that. But if you're do, if you're doing like you know how to balayage and stuff, that that's not that's not what TikTok's for. Yeah, I agree one hundred percent. I think that's why TikTok was so hard for me because I did so well on Instagram, being like, "Hey, hairdressers, this is how you do this. Here's a mm -hmm. tip." Right. TikTok, TikTok doesn't care about that. Mm -mm. TikTok doesn't care about how you balayage. They want to talk about the conversation that you and your client had. It's a little bit more like in the moment, a little bit. They want to see you do push-ups. They want to <laughs> see you do push-ups. <laughs> exactly. I think we should all do push-ups after this. <laughs> Oh boy, that'd be embarrassing. <laughs> That's a terrible video. Um, yeah, with what I think, where when people are building, and I think that you 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 said it earlier, but I'm gonna you know kind of bring it back around. Like whenever you have like a like a social media experience, that you have to give something to the viewers. You know, so many times we're doing stuff because oh, I want to look good here, but but what's the what's the what what's the viewer getting from it? Um, as far as you know, they're they're volunteering they're volunteering watching, and they'll voluntarily leave if you're not giving them something. Yeah, you know, and and whether again with TikTok, whether it's a cool like Ruby does a lot of vivid, so like her vivids get hits, you know, oh, yeah. like that, especially internationally, right? She says her yeah. her like her 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 Asian like a following is insane, you know. She's yeah. got a lot of that, but. I think a lot of people kind of miss that, especially like young people. And that's when you're telling your story and, and just with, I hate to keep bringing up the age, but with how young you are and, and to be like, so have that understanding that it's not about me, but it's about um, who, who can I help? Yeah. You know? Who can I help? Yeah. It's a selfless thing. I'm a selfless person. So it's mm -hmm. just, you know, comes with Instagram kind of thinking about the consumer. Cause that's why you're putting out the content. You're like, what do they want to see? And that's why I was able to grow because I was able to look at, okay, what are people liking? What are they enjoying? And let me put more out of that. But I think I did Instagram wrong, if I'm being completely honest. Oh, tell and me about it. I say this because I was focusing so much on viral reels and viral videos and getting all these views and, you know, sharing to multiple platforms. And yeah, that's building your numbers, but it's not building a community. So this is the one mistake I made with social media. I built a following. I didn't build a community. So I lost that with my followers because the reels were going viral. Yeah, they were coming in, but they weren't coming back for more. They weren't keeping up with me. They weren't following me for me as a person. They were following me because they wanted to learn the next foil hack or how I can foil with like a balayage board and little things like that. So that's where I made the mistake with social media. So I'm trying to kind of rebrand myself. And if you look at my content, you'll notice my past nine posts have been a little bit more personal, a little bit different than what I've typically done because I'm trying to change that. Did you do a post wow. about getting 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 the hack back? I did do a post about getting the hack back. Hash, back. Hashtag hack back. Hack back. Hack back. <laughs> <laughs> that's hard to say. Hashtag hack back. Yeah, I posted what I learned from the experience too because I was brought up learn? in a way, I, I learned a lot of things there, but I learned if you go through an experience, you know, you got to ask yourself instead of, oh, why did this happen to me? Or, oh, why did, what did I do to deserve this? It's more so, okay, what am I learning from this experience? So just to list out some things of what I've learned is don't put all your energy into one platform. We kind of talked about that, you know, mm -hmm. focus on TikTok, focus on Facebook, focus on YouTube, post things, Pinterest, you know, post things on these other platforms because if you put all your eggs in one basket and that basket gets taken out, yeah, it's gone. It's Dude, I'm going to interrupt there because, yeah. like, once again, to bring it full circle back to the conversation with Ruby. Um, I love you, Ruby. Uh, the conversation we had was, like, Facebook is for her clients. Instagram is for her hair clients. And, and TikTok's for her global audience. That is, I, mean, I never thought about it that but way. But it's definitely that way. Yeah. That's so smart. Right? So smart. And, I that, would and, and the content that she's creating is for, there's three different contents that she's creating for that. Wow, that's incredible. I'm going to like leave here today like going with like a whole new mindset. <laughs> oh. <laughs> get ready. Oh, you, 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 you DM Ruby. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. Oh, literally, that's incredible. I got to get her handle from you. Ruby okay. Divine. Ruby Divine. <laughs> Ruby Perfect. Divine, yeah. Ruby Divine. She I'm got, sending you a DM, girl. <laughs> she got her TikTok got hacked. So she was Did at like she? a she was like a, a a million five or a million or something, and, and it got she. I don't know if it got hacked or she lost it, but she's in the process of re of rebuilding it. But she was early, early. First off, Ruby is always the first one to step in in every uh, every uh, social media. She was back in the what, what was the uh, 
early God, MySpace. Was, she she was MySpace, and then there was something else that hairdressers like blew up on before Instagram. Was it Clubhouse? Club. She was de- well <laughs> during yeah, Clubhouse was, because that was during the pandemic. Like was, Ruby and I were on all the time. We would just sit there and like have phone conversations <laughs> on Clubhouse, and whoever dumped in, dumped in. You know, um, but we did a lot of that with uh, with Ruby. Uh, there was another a uh, uh, Periscope. Remember Periscope? No, what is Periscope? <laughs> oh, you're too young. So, <laughs> uh, Greg, what was Periscope? Uh, it was like, um, it was like, early live. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was oh. like, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was like live. Yeah, that was it. But it was kind of like roulette, right? It was a little bit like roulette. Like you would like, you would kind of like jump live to live to live, and then people were doing. It. So, uh, Ruby was early on on um, on on Periscope, and she built a following there. And then Instagram came, and she was like, Oh, I know how to do this. Wow. You know, and then she built a great following there. And but through the same thing, I mean, it was through her following is why she has her brand contact. Yeah. You know, so again, Meta, like, don't be so lo- yeah. aloof about this. You know? Get it together. Meta. Right. Yeah. Literally. I don't want to piss them off, though. I love you, Meta. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, I love it. I'm thankful for this free Look, platform. But it's Zuckerberg is going to hack Corey. No, 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 shut up. No, 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 no. Turn that mic off. Turn that mic off. <laughs> then he's going to hold Corey for ransom. <laughs> So you just added to his billions. <laughs> hey, Corey. I heard he'll do anything to get his account back. <laughs> yeah, for real. He'll put me in a chokehold. Isn't he doing like MMA oh, now yeah, or something? He's, he's doing like like a oh, like a brown presenting. belt. Like he's yeah, legit, he's, right? Yeah, he is legit. <laughs> That's crazy. You fight? No, absolutely not. You do push-ups though. I we do saw push-ups. the video. We get hacked. I do Pilates and push-ups. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. daughter is a white belt in jiu-jitsu, and she just tapped a blue belt. What? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But you know why? Beautiful. She's not wasting time on Facebook. She's, not time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's getting the trainings in. Yeah. She's getting the trainings in. She's getting in. the trainings in. <laughs> Chrissy, you're you're awesome, dude. And like hey, I totally get awesome. I totally get like the the old soul and stuff, because you're definitely like you're thinking ahead. Um and yeah. and w- when I was in my mid twenties thinking ahead, I was thinking backwards. And when you think backwards, it's about mistakes. When you think ahead, it's about success. I was only thinking backwards, you know, like <laughs> Damn, I keep making the same mistakes, you big <laughs> moron. You know, but but, but you're amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I love what yeah. I do, and I'm just following a dream. And I encourage others to do the same thing. That's awesome. How can people yeah. follow your dream with you? They can find me on Instagram at Color by Chris. That's with a K and two S's. You can find me on TikTok as well, Color by Chris. Check the check out the TikTok. I'm trying to build that one. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> if you're global. Check if, you're, out the if you're global. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah a- check me out on there. That's amazing. Yeah. Chris, thank thanks you. you thanks for making time for us. Thanks for um thanks for your mom's uh, baking. Yeah. I mean I mean thanks for coming in <laughs> and spending the day with us. Um and uh dude, just I, I I'm 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 very happy that, that we got to do this and that we got to sit down because I think you're pretty extraordinary. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's uh, awesome. Sure thing. Miss Krista Bartik. Bartik or Tech? Bartik. Bartik, got it. Ah, even question myself. <laughs> TikTok. Bar TikTok. 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 Bar TikTok. <laughs> Bar tick. Bar tick. <laughs> <laughs> Krista, thank you for joining us on oh, well, thank you uh, thank you for joining us on your day off. That was an awkward end. Dude, that was awesome. <laughs> that was yeah. great. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends. Give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.